Moin and guten tag, it's sourdough baking time again and in this video I'm going to be showing you five tricks to create superb dough strength. I will be using a very sticky dough around 80% hydration, my flour has around 14% protein. So if your flour has a little bit less protein you might want to be reducing the water content. I'll be showing you step by step how your dough should transition from one stage to the other. If your dough does not look like my dough, chances are that you might have used too much water or eventually your sourdough is a little bit too sour. Now, if your dough is too sour, then you might have to change the feeding schedule of your sourdough because a too sour sourdough is going to attack the gluten network and that makes it almost impossible to put together a nice dough. To me, on the one hand, dough strength, and on the other hand, a proper fermentation process. This is really the basis to baking a great sourdough loaf. First up is the autolysis. I already added my flour and I'm now going to be adding the water. I'll be using a relatively wet dough. It has around 80 grams of water per 100 grams of flour, 80% hydration. And for the autolysis, we're just going to combine flour and water. And this is going to create so much strength by just waiting. You get amazing strength simply by waiting. I really do this for every breath that I do. And now what you want to do is you just want to start stirring with your hand. I need to get a little bit more water. We are not going to develop any strength. We will just be taking our hand and then we will be stirring this. Simply like this. Do this for around a minute. And then some people wait four hours but to me 30 minutes is already enough it already creates a lot of strength and we will be doing other steps afterwards to develop our gluten so um, it typically depends a little bit on my schedule it's always at least 30 minutes and um, in this case since my sourdough starter is already ready um, I'm just going to be doing this for 30 minutes. If my sourdough starter wasn't ready, then I would be doing this for a little bit longer period of time. So <clears throat> actually my sourdough starter, the readiness of my sourdough starter kind of dictates how long I, I auto lease, I guess. You want to make sure that your sourdough starter is not too sour because over time you will have more acid and that acid is going to attack your gluten network. So all the work that we're doing now, if your sourdough starter is too acid, acidity, that's all in vain. In this case, I fed my sourdough starter in the evening, one to five to five ratio. And now around eight hours later, it's almost ready. I'm just now trying to use my hands here to remove some of the flour here from the edges of my pot. I like to use the pot because you can just close it with a lid. Makes it very easy. So this is looking good. And now I'm going to let this sit for 30 minutes. And let me show you now how our dough looks like currently. If I take my hand and I try to pull this, you can see it just tears apart, right? Now this is where the magic is going to happen. <laughs> Actually, there was a little bit of flour left. You will be amazed to see what's going to happen in 30 minutes. 30 minutes pass, and let's just have a look at our dough. Firstly, um, you want to be wetting your hands a little bit. That makes it a little bit easier to work with the dough. So I'm going inside and I'm pulling this out and just have a look how magically this dough came together. So jiggly. <laughs> All by just waiting. See, that's why I also recommend not to use a, uh, a kitchen machine because you get a much, much better feeling for your dough. And you also see it sticks less to my hand. Okay, this was just me. Um, because you, you, you understand the signs of your dough. And that's what I really like about this. And now I'm going to be adding my sourdough starter and then I'll start kneading. I'm going to add my salt. I always like to add uh, two percent. Calculate on the flour mass, so that's in case in this case twenty grams of salt, and then my sourdough, twenty percent of the sourdough. Um, side note: You want to make sure that your sourdough double in size. I like to use a rubber band to mark it, and I also challenge you just taste your sourdough real quick. 
to get a feeling for how sour it is. If it's too sour, um, try reducing the amount of flour that you feed. But if your sourdough is really too sour, you're gonna have issues later on. You are not going to be able to develop all that dough strength. So this is a common mistake that I see people doing. That's 200 grams, 20% of sourdough starter. Mm -mm. Okay, I always like to use 20%, that's my best ratio. That's the pros and cons of fermentation times and uh, also not being too sour. I'm just going to take this and I will just spread this a little bit here over my flour. And now what I need to do is I just need to start kneading, incorporating and kneading. And for this, there's not really a special technique. I just like to go below, fold this out and fold this over. But there's so many different techniques that you could do. <laughs> there's not the one technique to rule them all. I see people going crazy like, like this. But I'm not such a sporty guy, so this is a little bit too much work for me. I just like to flap it and fold it over. And I'm going to be doing this for just a little bit longer um, until I see until I see that this sourdough has been incorporated everywhere. And this is already the dough already feels quite good. You see, it holds together like this already. This is a sign already of good gluten development. So if your dough does not feel like this at this stage, chances are you might have used a little bit too much water for your flour or your sourdough is already too acidic. So just one more time, have a look at how I can pull up this dough. It's gonna tear eventually, but here it just holds together like this. Good looking dough. If you're not here, then again, you want to reconsider. I always see people just blindly following hydration levels on the interwebs, but the hydration level really depends on the flour that you're using. And I tested this for my flour combination. Try taking a bowl, try mixing it with water, with different uh, levels of water. So let's say make five bowls or so, and then just see at which bowl you can still have the window pane effect when you do the autolysis. And that's probably the amount of water that we, you wanna be using for your flour. And every flour is unique. <laughs> and again, we we're just talking about uh, wheat-based breads where we wanna develop an open crumb. If you wanna do a rye bread or so, this wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't even work here. So this dough has already came together quite nice. I'm not trying to build that much strength yet. I'm just going to let this sit for another 15 minutes to allow the dough to come together again. So 15 minutes from now. And then I will be doing something which I which I call which is called bench kneading. I will take this, put this here on the surface, and knead this a little bit, and this is going to create so much <coughs> more strength <clears throat> and the timer starts now so the timer the fermentation has already begun because <clears throat> we added the sourdough and this means the yeast and the bacteria is already eating your dough so now is actually the moment where you should set yourself a timer Alexa stelle ein timer für sechs Stunden so Alexa also speaks the German so in my case six hours from now i think i'll be done but don't just follow this number it depends on your sourdough it depends on your temperature right now it's around 24 degrees celsius here i like to take a small piece of the dough <clears throat> and store it in another jar so that i can observe once that dough doubled in size and then my bulk fermentation is complete but again now i will just let this sit here give it a good tap very 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 important 
good tap and we will be back in 15 minutes around 15 minutes passed and i'm now going to be doing bench kneading and for this you need a bench it can also be a wooden surface whatever you have available and the trick here is to not <clears throat> use any flour at all there's going to be two things that you need you need to have a little bit of water ideally cold water and ideally a bench scraper i like to use a bench scraper which is very stiff like this i'm just going to put this to the side for now um, you can also do this without a bench scraper but a bench scraper just makes it a little bit easier i'm watering my hands and i'm just going in here folding this into middle into the middle to remove the dough from the edges of the container and have a look no more sticky things on my hand this is the level that you should have at this stage this means that you already developed quite a good gluten network now i'm just going to take this out of the container put this here on the surface of course now it's stuck a little bit more now what we're going to do is we are going to take the dough and we will fold it on top of itself always gluing the dough together and this is going to create so much more strength even Look how the dough is still flowing away almost like a pancake with wetted hands <clears throat> and i'm also wetting my dough scraper a little <clears throat> i'm just going here and i will take this pull this outward and fold this over a little bit like if we were already to shape it though in the end this is a really good exercise i'm taking the dough and i'm putting it together and you can see it just stays this shape already by just doing one fold if your dough just flows out then you might want to start the process again from scratch <laughs> i hope it's okay that i'm telling you in between all the way how your dough looks like i feel that that way you can follow this tutorial a little bit better so I'm now going to take this and I will fold this into the middle and then I will take this and also fold this over. Now the dough started to stick a little bit to my dough scraper. What you can do is either you just live with it <laughs> or you wet your dough scraper a little bit more with cold water. Take this here and fold this over. Just have a look. How well the dough stays together i always like to just tuck this down here this is gonna make the dough stay together now i'll be doing this one more time actually you can do this for five minutes you can do this as long as you like i just like to do it until i feel that the dough is holding its shape even better i'm going to be doing exactly the same thing i will fold this into the middle and then i will fold this over Actually, I folded this uh, a little bit too far now. That's also okay. Just have a look at how this dough is already staying together. I'm now going to take this and I will fold this over here. And this only works because we have a bench where the dough is sticking to. If we were to use flour, we wouldn't be able to do this. The dough would just uh, follow us. The trick is really to not use any flour for this. One more time and you can see me how i'm pulling the dough dough away um, this way i have a bigger surface area which means that more things can stick to itself small surface area would probably be like this but the big surface area more like this sticking together one more time like this and you see this dough with just a few things already holds its shape like this one thing that I'm going to show you now is I'm already going to be rounding this up. This is just for the beauties, but at the same time, this will also create um, additional strength. This dough will rest afterwards for 15 minutes, and then we will be doing our lamination technique one more time. With the dough scraper, make sure at a 45 degree angle, you have it like this. You will go inside, rotate this slightly, and then push. So rotate push and this hand here on the left hand side is going to help you it's already a little bit of a mess in general the cleaner your hand is the easier this is but in this case i'm just going to be wetting it a little bit more that should be okay so go inside push go inside push 
Go inside, push. I can lift the dough into the center again with my bench scraper. Push. And look how well the dough is coming together. Let me also try to do this just with my hands without the dough scraper. You might be losing some more dough on the surface, but you see this also works. I'm just trying to touch the dough right here. And we're using the tension of the surface to work the dough. And I'm always tucking it under at the top. You see, even without the dough scraper. So actually, probably you could skip this, uh, but I like to use it, it makes things a little bit easier. I will take this, transfer this to, to the container, allow the gluten to relax one more time, and then we will be doing our lamination. And just have a look how well this dough is already staying together. This is going to be my dough for two loaves. So this is a little bit larger than a regular loaf. I will do the lamination, then I will divide this because I don't like to bulk ferment them together. I will bulk ferment them differently because then I can test. I wanted to visualize in one other video, pre-shaping versus no pre-shaping. So let me take this. By using the dough scraper, I will go below. And now I can lift this on my dough scraper like this. and put it back to the container. 15 minutes and we will be back. 50 minutes passed and we are almost at the end of this video, but we will be do doing two more things. We will now be doing the lamination, then afterwards the coil folding. This is the dough. Again, I'm going in here, folding it over just a little bit so that I can release the dough from the container. Then with one movement, have a look how much less the dough already sticks. So this dough already developed quite some dough strength. Now we will be doing the lamination and the lamination is pretty much exactly the same thing as the bench kneading, except that we will lay out the dough flat and fold it on top of itself. You see how I'm using the surface? I'm making the dough stick here to the surface. And the dough pulling back like this, this is already a good sign of gluten development. So take the dough, lay it out very flat like this. Um, you could also be using your bench scraper to do this, but I figured I'm not going to use it just to show you that it's also possible without because I always like to show people that you can bake amazing bread even without using tools. This is actually one of the reasons why I'm running this channel, because I want, I want to enable people to bake amazing bread at home without having to invest in a lot of equipment. And I know sometimes it's tempting, especially when you see the pros using all sorts of tools, but um, yeah, no tools. So let me show you, I'm going to take this and I will fold this into the middle. I will wet my hands a little bit. That makes it easier to work with the dough. And you see this, so satisfying. <laughs> fold this into the middle. I was not able to fold everything at once, but no problem. Just going to take the second side and also fold this here. And now also, I'm pulling this out a little bit and then I'm just folding it right there, okay? Now I'm taking the bottom side, which you can't fully see. I'm sorry, just gonna be quick. Pull this out, also fold this over. And now we made the dough stick to itself here in, on this area. Pull this out, fold this into the middle. And now our dough looks like this. And I will be doing a four times fold, similar to croissant making. I will fold this here, this here, and then I will fold it together. So fold this here, fold this here, and now fold this over. Our laminated dough, looking good, and it just stays together so well. 
What I like to do now is I like to take a small piece of the dough, just a tiny piece, and I will place it inside of this container. That's a nifty hack that I always do. Just a small piece like this, which should cover the bottom of the container. And then I'm marking that with a rubber band. And that way I can see that the dough doubled in size at some point, and then I'm ready to proceed with shaping. Now, I recommend you to do this instead of uh, just checking on the hours that see, some people are saying, like wait two hours or wait five hours or six hours, because this really depends on your setup, your temperature. And this way you will always bulk ferment your dough right. It won't be too sticky. At some point it will become a sticky mess. Um, yeah, so this is a great hack. Mark this and then you can see how well the dough proceeds. I'm just gonna fix that in a little bit. It should of course be here at the bottom of the container everywhere evenly. So, but not part of this video. I'm just gonna put that to the side for now. One thing that I see many beginner bakers do is they like to bake multiple loaves, which I also do here, and this is gonna be two. Now you would have to do with the pre-shaping. The problem with the pre-shaping is it's quite hard and also quite dangerous. You could over pre-shape and uh, basically destroy the whole crumb structure. So what I like to do is I like to take this dough and divide it into two pieces and bulk ferment them differently. I will have a little bit more work because I have to apply the coil folds to both the doughs, but that way I don't have that big of an issue later on. I don't have to pre-shape. I can just take them out of the container and shape them directly. So that's one less error. So I'm just marking this to like this. You could also weigh it, but I'm too lazy. With a quick movement of the dough scraper, you could also be using a knife. I'm going to separate those doughs. And now I'm doing exactly the same thing again. I'm just rounding it up. Roll number one. Like we did before, 45 degree angle. And rotate, pull towards me. I'm also just going to show you how to do it using your hands. With my hands again, I'm going around, pulling the dough in, tucking it below. This only works because there is no flour on the surface. So two good looking dough balls, they more or less hold their shape. This is how it should look like for you before proceeding. If it does not look like this for you, then chances are you might not have added enough strength. It could be too, so not enough strength, too sour, or maybe you just use too much water for your dough. Next up, I'll be doing the hourly coil folds until this thing here doubled in size, and then I will shape it and bake my bread. I'm just having fun. <laughs> Look at how nice and smooth this dough is. I actually combined the dough balls one more time because I wanted to take this picture, but just had to share share this. This is a boss-like dough. This is how your dough should look like after adding all those all the strength. You see, they're not flattening out. They are flattening out a little bit, but not as much. I've been a little bit lazy. I actually waited for one and a half hours. I just didn't have the time. My point is here, it's okay. You don't have to do this necessarily every hour. Now I'm going to be wetting my hands and then I'll show you how to coil fold. Now, one thing, the dough did not increase that much in size yet. And um, it's still somewhat sticky. It becomes less sticky over time. That's because if you look at a balloon, basically over time, it becomes more uh, inflated and then you have less of a surface area touching the surface and also your hands. But in this case, it's still somewhat sticky and I have to remove it from the edges of the container just a little bit so that I can stretch and fold it. There's multiple techniques to stretch and fold, but I like this technique because it's very gentle on the dough. You're building all that structure in your dough. You want your dough to inflate. And by, if I were to just pull this up like this, then I would be damaging um, the dough. 
So that's why I like to do the coil fold. And for this, you have to make sure that your hands are wetted. I go in here on the side and now I just take the dough, pull it upwards and fold it on top of itself. Like this, a couple of times until it's no longer stuck. This is here around half, half of the container. Now I do exactly the same thing on the other side. And you see, it does not stick to my hands. Now my dough looks like this. Now I have to apply the same thing from the other side. Not 100% the same thing, I will show you. And you can already see some nice bubbles here inside of the dough, good sign of fermentation. Going upwards, folding this over. Okay. And now what I will do is I will take my dough and I will basically fold it on top of this side. And to do that, wetting my hands again, go in and place my dough like this. Now this is a good looking dough. And I'm just gonna keep doing that for a few more times, hopefully in an hour or so, and you will see that over time your dough will stick together much, much, much better. I'm just going to show you one more time also with the pot container because it's a little bit different, but same thing again. Go here, go around the surface. It's not the surface, the edge. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes my English is not so good. Now we will go inside of here, we will pull this upwards, fold this over a couple of times, go to the other side, do exactly the same thing, very gentle, very smooth, good looking dough. Now I'll turn this around from the other side, put the dough on top of itself basically, one more time. Round this up like this. Now, good looking dough. You can see that the dough is already increasing in size. Let's do one more coil fold. I just want to show you the difference from before to now. I'm going to be wetting my hands again. Look at those nice signs of fermentation. The dough is coming together very well. In this case, I feel the dough is not going to stick as much, so I'm not going to remove it from the edge of the container because this also damages the dough just a little bit. So I'm going to avoid doing that. Just go on here inside. I will pull this upwards, flip this over, pull upwards, flip this over, and one more time. And the idea is that this is also at the bottom and this here is way less sticky than this part of the dough. So uh, by folding it over, you always have the not so sticky side. Rotate this one more time. And note, look at my hands, <laughs> they are clean. So this is how it should look like for you now. If not, chances are you might not be going in. Probably I'm just touching it with gentle hands or maybe you have been using too much water or your sourdough is too sour. So one more time, wetted hands, go inside, flip this over. And now the same thing here. Looking good. I'm just gonna take the camera and I'll show you how it looks like from the side. And this is how the dough looks like on the side after coil folding. Nice signs of fermentation. This dough is coming together very, very well. Looking at this jar, I would say that the dough is almost done. I'm gonna give it around another 30 minutes or so. And now I will be applying my final coil fold. Going to wet my hands one more time. And this will be the final coil fold. I'll shape this in around 30 minutes or so. The reason I like this container because I can just flip over the dough. This doesn't work so well with the pot. Dough is coming together really, really well, just the way how it feels. It has a nice uh, gentle touch to it and you can feel that the dough already expanded. 
it doesn't feel like at the start. This also takes some time to get used to. Okay, again, one more time. Lift this upwards. Fold this over. And you can see, I did not have to remove the dough from the sides of the container. That's because the dough has expanded. Now, if you always have to remove the dough from the side of the container all the time, that's also a sign that something is off. One more time from this side. And now rotate this. And just look at this <laughs> good tacky dough. Very satisfying to work with. And with the other dough, just have a look. It did not even expand this much in size anymore. It stayed, it, hold, it held its shape pretty much. One more coil fold here too. I find this last part of the coil fold always to be the most challenging part. Thank you very much for watching. It's been fun. I hope you learned something new. If you have questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments section. And please don't give up. It's going to take a while to get there. Now, one last tip, one last closing word. If your dough is just way, way, way too sticky and you're not able to build that strength, just use a loaf pan. Put some oil in the loaf pan, proof your dough in the loaf pan and bake it. You're going to have an amazing bread.